Hello and welcome to my best movies of the decade video. Thank you for stopping by. Before I get the video started and talk about these 10 brilliant movies, I do want to say a couple things. The first thing being, these are just my opinions. If you disagree with them, that's totally cool. Feel free to lay into me in the comments section. And number two, all these movies could require like a 20 minute analysis, but I don't really have time to do that. So I'm going to put some videos in the description for a few of the movies. Some YouTubers have some great videos on them already, so feel free to look into those. But let's get into the list. Come on! The ship is going to explode! What are you doing? Find me when you wake up. What? Come find me when you wake up. Yeah! Number 10 was probably the hardest spot on the entire list, but I went with Edge of Tomorrow, a fantastic sci-fi movie. Out of all the movies on this list, I think Edge of Tomorrow is probably the most watchable, rewatchable movie. It is entertaining through and through. It has a really interesting premise. And although some people say it's sort of like Groundhog Day with aliens, it does a lot of interesting things. I think the relationship between Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt was really, really cool. They had great chemistry with each other. And just the idea of, you know, having a relationship with someone and seeing them die every day, I thought that was really cool. It has one of the, actually not one of the, it has the best end credit song of all time. No dispute, it's fantastic. And when you have actors like Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt, who have an immense amount of charisma leading the show, it's a fun time through and through. It has a little dodgy acting for some of the side characters, but apart from that, Edge of Tomorrow is an amazing movie and something you could watch for years and years to come. I have labored in this country for 15 years. I know it better than you. Our religion does not take root in this country. Because the roots have been torn up. No, because this country is a swamp. Nothing grows here. Plant a sapling here and the roots rot. Choosing between The Irishman and Silence was not easy. They're both amazing films, but I went with Silence because it deals with themes that I think were a little bit more personal to Martin Scorsese. Although this movie is designed for people with religious beliefs, I think even if you don't have a faith, you can relate to the part of the movie which is telling about how far are you willing to go for the things you believe in. And for some people, maybe they go a little bit too far. And maybe for some people, maybe they give it up too easily. And that's sort of the conflict in this movie. One of the great scenes comes from Father Ferreira when he tells Andrew Garfield's character that if you're going to pray, you have to pray with your eyes open. You can't just let things happen because you think it's the will of a greater power. You have to act and you have to exert your will in order for things to become better. And that was a really interesting part of the film. It's an amazing movie. The technical aspect is fantastic. The cinematography is absolutely gorgeous. So if you have a couple hours to spend, consider watching Silence. Amazing movie. What you gonna tell me about Ray and Turk? Who? Who? What are you, an owl? You an owl, Lou? I never heard of him. You never heard of him? No, sir. Natural Animals might be one of the more controversial movies on this list. I think a lot of people have some problems with it, which may be justified. The opening to the film is a little bit uh, a little bit divisive. I know some people who didn't really appreciate that. But aside from that, the storytelling techniques are really, really cool. The story within a story, I love that part. Aaron Taylor Johnson's character was disgusting, horrific, incredible. Should have been nominated for an Oscar. I'm not going to get on that. Michael Shannon and Jake Gyllenhaal, wonderful. Amy Adams, of course, is Amy Adams. And then apart from that, the themes dealing with relationships where power is on one side and the other person feels weak. And the relationship part, which is, what do you want from your relationship? Do you want a completely loving relationship or do you want social status? Do you want a better lifestyle? Is there a balance between the two? Tom Ford clearly has seen these type of themes in his life and wanted to tell a story about it. And he did a fantastic job. I'm really looking forward to what he does next. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest Tarantino super fan. I like a lot of his movies, but I don't love a lot of them. But Django Unchained is so cool. There was no way I could keep it off this top 10 list. I mean, if you watch that clip and you aren't just completely satisfied with everything going on in your life, I'm not sure what could do it. It is just, oh my gosh, I love that scene. 
Um, in the scene when the slaveholder is bumbling with his gun and Django gets the whip, when the score kicks in, he's standing there. Awesome. KKK scene is, of course, iconic at this point in time. It's hilarious. It has um, amazing action sequences. The characters are great. DiCaprio is at the top of his game, as is Christoph Waltz. Dr. Schultz's relationship with Django is one of the best parts of the movie. It's probably the best Western of the decade, and it's my personal favorite Tarantino movie. I'm sure most of you have seen it by now, but if you haven't, check it out. It will be the most entertaining movie you've seen in a long time, guaranteed. What is going on? We're leaving. What? What's, what's in there? What's going on? What happened in there? You should have walked in and looked, Rick. If you're curious, that's what I'm paying you to do. You need to show initiative. Jake Gyllenhaal is a common theme through my top 10. He is my favorite actor, and his performance in Nightcrawler, I think, is the best performance of the decade. It is electrifying, completely ignored by the Oscars, of course. They don't know what they're doing. But the movie as a whole is sort of a study in what somebody is willing to do to succeed. And Lou Bloom is a character. He's like someone looked up on the internet how to succeed, and he took everything extremely literally and does everything perfectly to a key. And Gyllenhaal just... It's such a wonderful performance, and Lou Bloom as a character, I, I'll probably make another video talking about him, but just the themes and, and everything to consider, Reza Matt is just really, really great as well. He plays the sheep, contrary to Jake Hall's wolf, and they play perfectly off each other. The end sequences are wonderful. The interrogation scene at the end of the movie, when you get to see someone sort of understand what's underneath this robotic face of Lou Bloom. I love that scene as well. The actress, I can't remember her name, but she does a really, really good job. And again, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a great movie. Some people say they're bored, but you know, that's ridiculous. Nightcrawler, wonderful. You doing some shopping in the value mall lately? <clears throat> Why? Is it a crime to shop there? I can't afford to buy suits from Brooks Brothers. <laughs> I, uh, no. I mean, you bought children's clothes. Jillian Hall returns to my list in Prisoners. Denis Villeneuve, the best filmmaker of the decade, he's my favorite working director. And Prisoners is one of the best studies in what are you willing to do for the people you love, especially Hugh Jackman's character, who is a type of guy who will do anything for control. He wants to be control of every situation, and when that control is stolen from him he tries to find it in any place possible even the darkest places imaginable and it gets pretty dark especially with him and paul dano paul dano by the way really good i'm not the biggest fan of his but this is his best performance as far as i've seen Hall playing detective loki one of the great heroes of the decade i don't think many people see him as a hero in some ways he doesn't really strike you as one but the things he does throughout the movie to save these two little girls is really inspiring hugh jackman and Hall. I'm going to run out of adjectives at some point, especially recording, because, you know, my brain's not the best at this. But they're both at the top of their game. Denis Villeneuve, I cannot wait for Dune next year. It's going to be, there's no way that movie's going to be bad. I'm not, I'll make a video on Dune probably sometime. But Prisoners, Denis Villeneuve, you cannot get much better with that guy at the helm. I doubt there's anything I could say about Mad Max Fury Road which has not been said already. A lot of the top 10 films of the decade list have Mad Max on it, and for good reason. The movie is just visceral. George Miller's vision for this movie, I'm not sure how the hell he came up with a lot of this stuff. Quick note, actually, it did not have a screenplay. The whole movie, the whole development side of the movie was done on storyboards, which makes a lot of sense because the visuals for this movie needed to be complete perfection to work, and they were, of course, complete perfection. Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron are superb in their roles. I know some people were a little bit disappointed that Max took a backseat, wink wink, get it, to Furiosa in this movie, but I think people were missing the end of the movie, a big part of the movie, I think it's the climax actually, when Max tells Furiosa that my name is Max, and he realizes at that point it's not until he decided to help these women who really needed his help 
and to become a moral man, it's not until he does that when he can get over the tragedy of his past and he can understand what he needs to do going forward because his environment in this just horrendous world is telling him to be an animal, to be a bad man because it gets you ahead. But when he helps these women, he finally finds out to become what he needs to be. He needs to act in a moral way. And that's a really great message. And it made Mad Max one of the best movies of the decade. Freeze! Step away from him. Put that down. I mean it. Move away from him right now. Don't ever point a weapon at me again. Cut your breath. And get back up there. It was almost impossible to choose between Prisoners and Sicario, but Sicario, admittedly, it has a personal meaning to me because it's one of the first movies that really got me to love film in general. But aside from that, it has some incredible moments. The border crossing scene has, of course, become an iconic image in the last decade of filmmaking. There's not much to be said about it. It's amazing. Del Toro's character is my favorite part of the movie. I think Alejandro requires a full video on him, which I probably will make when we meet him. He wakes up from the bad dream. Just love that because it kind of gives us a warning of what this guy is and the pain he's dealing with. Brolin is hilarious, actually, but he's brutal, and his comparison with Emily Blunt's character and how they operate is really, really interesting. The theme of what are you going to be in this life? Are you going to be a wolf or are you going to be a sheep? Especially in a position of power, are you going to go about handling things in a justified, dignified manner with due process? Or are you going to be brutal? Are you going to go for the throat? What is the best avenue of accomplishing something and making the world a better place? It's a really interesting discussion. I think the movie has a lot of philosophical Shakespearean themes to it, which I really enjoyed. Denis Villeneuve, there's not much more I can say about the guy. He's a master. And if you haven't seen Sicario, you need to check it out. Look up here. Look at me. Do you think you're out of tune? Yes. Then why the fuck didn't you say so? Picking between the top two was probably one of the hardest decisions of my entire life. Not really, but sort of. And Whiplash, my god. What a movie. Probably the second most rewatchable after Edge of Tomorrow. J.K. Simmons, if Lou Bloom and Jake Gyllenhaal did not exist, I'd say it's the best performance of the decade. And Miles Teller, not a big Miles Teller guy. Really, really good too. The core message and themes of Whiplash are pretty heavy-handed in their delivery, which I don't mind, actually. But the message is, of course, what are you willing to do to succeed? It's very Nightcrawler-esque, Black Swan-esque. And it's also what avenue are you going to take to get people to reach their potential? Are you going to be brutal? Are you going to test their capabilities, test their ability to endure? Or are you going to take a lighter approach? I think the movie is telling us there's a balance that you have to strike. Fletcher, of course, does get Neiman to reach his potential. But is that the best thing for Neiman as a human being? Is it worth you know, hurting his relationships with his father and with his girlfriend. Is that worth it? That's the core message of Whiplash, and it makes it a fantastic movie. That's, I mean, that's what filmmaking is about. It's about asking questions and finding truth, and Whiplash is one of the best movies of the decade in doing that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thanks for the thought. But uh, it's not going anywhere. And I'm tired. You're tired? I'm so fucking tired. I thought I just needed a night's sleep, but it's... It's more than that. Inside Lewin Davis hit me harder than any movie this decade. It was hard to pick it over Whiplash, but the themes it tells... We can attest to it. Every single person on Earth can. Dealing with failure. How does Lewin approach dealing with the disappointment in his life? Especially when he's, he's close, he's just not there, you know? And I think we've all had points in our lives when we're close to what we want and close to being who we want to be, but we just cannot get there. And for some reasons that aren't in our control, Lewin fails because of his personality and he can't change that. And the Coen brothers, I think they made the best movie of the past decade as well, but they do a great job framing this struggling human being. The music, of course, is wonderful. I'm not sure another movie could present the themes better than Inside Lewin Davis did. I will make a full-length video on the movie sometime in the future, but Inside Lewin Davis is the 
best movie of the decade, in my opinion. And again, I'll probably say this for every movie, but if you haven't seen it, it may not be the best movie for every day of your life. But if you're ever in a time of disappointment, watch this movie because I think it has a lot to say. And again, it's impeccable. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it as I try to grow my channel. It was a really good decade for movies, I think, and I'm really excited for the next one. I fell in love with film over the past five years, and if you're here, I'm sure you love film as well. So please like and subscribe. I put out content regards to film and storytelling pretty often, and you can check out some of my previous content on my channel. If you have any different opinions, which I know you do, I'm sure, <laughs> please leave it in the comments. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think what was your favorite movies of the decade. Again, thank you so much for watching. I cannot emphasize that enough. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and hopefully I will talk to you soon. Have a great one.